And welcome back to Meeting of the Minds. Today I'm here with Father Jacinto, who is a friar of the Immaculate. And Father, I really appreciate you being here with us today. Great to be here, Gene. Absolutely. I figured um, probably the best thing we could do, we could start with the Angelus. Would you like to lead that? Sure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary. And she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh. And dwelled among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, Father. I love, um, I lo I love watching your videos, the homilies, on your YouTube page. And your, and your voice awesome. is just so soothing and calm. I love it. <laughs> as long as it doesn't put you to sleep, huh? <laughs> nope, that's that's the one thing it doesn't do. That's that's oh. good. <laughs> Great. Okay, Father. So I was um really excited to have you on the show. I wanted to introduce my audience to more information about the Friars of the Immaculate. Can you please talk about how the order began and what is maybe different, your point of difference from other orders? Sure. Our our order began with the, um, actually within the Franciscans, uh, the conventual Franciscans, you know, our founder, Father Stefano Maria Manelli, and our co-founder, Father Gabriel Mary Pelletieri, were conventuals for many years. And at a certain point, you know, Father Stefano was inspired to, to follow the example of St. Maximilian Kolbe, a fellow conventual Franciscan, you know, who died, you know, in 1941, uh, but to uh, to follow his example of living out the Franciscan life, you know, given at the time of the church, uh, you know, after the Second Vatican Council, there was, uh, there was need for reform in the religious life in many religious communities, and our founder had, um, had noticed a need for that in the in his own branch of the conventual Franciscans, and and found a, a model to follow in in Saint Maximilian Kolbe, who was somewhat contemporary and a, a real someone very close to the conventuals, of course. And so it was a, a really a, a good fit, you know, to uh, to follow his example, living out the Franciscan life as he did, you know, in a Marian key. You know, he is a great uh, Marian uh, apostle. Great Marian devotee of our, of our Lady the Immaculate, and so um, basically in 1970, that's when it all started. You know, kind of as conventuals, our first friars, you know, kind of uh, follow this way of life, mirroring that of Saint Maximilian's you know, communities in Poland, 
and in Japan, the communities, the cities of the Immaculate he founded. And um, so from 1970 onwards, there was this this experience, you know, kind of a reform movement of sorts, and it became very defined, you know, over the years, very fruitful. Um, and, and in 1990, it was made official that, you know, we should start a separate community, you know, uh, uh, that uh, Pope St. John Paul II had uh, granted that uh, say permission, of course, with the you know, uh, the blessing of um, the uh, superiors and the conventuals all those years to continue this this reform movement, but it became very distinct. And so to preserve that way of living, it was it was uh, considered necessary to have a, a separate institute. And that was 1990. And then in 1998, you know, we were uh, blessed to receive uh, recognition by the Holy See as a Institute of Religious Life, you know, of pontifical right. Excellent. Excellent. And now, one thing I've noticed when I've watched the homilies of the Friars of the Immaculate, or when I interact with you or the, or the other Friars, there's just something different about the FI. A beautiful devotion. I mean, and again, there's very great religious people across the board, so we're certainly not putting anyone down, but I just noticed something very special, unique about uh, you all. And I think a lot of it has to do with that fourth vow that you take, whereas religion, all religious take poverty, obedience, and chastity. You take a fourth vow, the Marian vow, and I have the book right here, <laughs> right there. Right, um, right. I, I, I read it. In fact, the, the one priest on here looks like Cardinal Burke, if you look at him quick enough. Yeah, that's actually Father Stefano, of course. <laughs> <laughs> for, yeah. for a second. But yeah, t tell, us about, <laughs> tell us about the Marian vow. So the Marian vow, it is you know, the fourth vow that we that we make, you know, we profess, you know, uh, with the the three evangelical councils, poverty, chastity, obedience. As you said, you know, every religious community, you know, professes those three vows, uh, which is, um, you know, a standard you could say, and, and uh, is um, a complete offering of oneself to God in that way with those three vows. Uh, but uh, there's a fourth vow in in various religious communities. Not all of them have one, of course, but some do. And the fourth vow is really a, a specifying vow. Like, you know, particularly what what really is the um, the charism of the institute, you know, and uh, something special that a given religious order or congregation, you know, uh, would like to, you could say, contribute to the church, you know, a, a special charism. So ours being, you know, the Marian vow of total consecration or unlimited consecration to Our Lady in the form of a vow, you know, is what you can, you know, makes us different, you could say, from other religious communities and uh, and the way we live out the Marian vow, you know, you know, just again, it's it's modeling after St. Maximilian Kolbe's way of living out total consecration. You know, but um, he wasn't able to do that in his time with a, a public vow, you know, but just a private vow. And so we are blessed to do that, you know, as a public vow recognized by the church and, you know, and in our constitutions and, and so forth. I've, I've never heard of um, a fourth vow for any other order. Do that. Is there any other that exists like that or is this unique? No, there are. Uh, the first example I could think of is the the sisters of uh, uh, the missionaries of charity, you know, of Mother Teresa, you know, they take a fourth vow of you know, kind of complete wholehearted uh, service to the poorest of the poor. And other communities of, you know, certain communities of nuns, they take a fourth vow of enclosure, you know, like maybe the papal enclosure, uh, like certain uh, Carmelite communities or poor Clare communities that vow to live the enclosure. And there are other vows, fourth vows too. I can't think of too many of them at the, at the moment, but uh, I, there are a few others, I, I'm sure. Okay. And one of the things I really liked, um, you see a lot of people doing the Marian consecration now, thanks be to God, mm -hmm. after Father Michael Gately's book, 33 Days to Morning Glory. Mm -hmm. And 
what what I really liked was uh, especially coming into contact with you and the Friars of the Immaculate was that, okay, so now we do the Marian consecration and then you start to say, well, now what? Well, now the whole point is to Marianize your entire life. And I think, okay, well, how do I do that practically? So that's that's where I think then we're you would be able to come in to help show us the way. How do you, how do you as friars marionize your life as religious? And how do we, the laity, take the consecration that we've done and now marionize our lives? Sure. As friars, um, so there's three main commitments for us, you know, attached to our Marian vow. So that it's not something that's just kind of abstract you know, but actually very concrete. So the three main obligations attached to Marian vow for us is first, you know, Marian prayer. So cultivating a, a Marian prayer life, you know, spending time with Our Lady in prayer, you know, uh, every day, you know, and uh, asking her to, you know, to lead us ever closer to God. And, you know, different Marian prayers, Marian consecrations, renewing that consecration every day and uh, you know, praying the Angelus as we just did, you know, uh, other Marian prayers that we can pray above all the rosary, you know, praying that daily. And uh, we do that in common as a community and uh, are encouraged to pray in private the rosary, you know, as much as we can, you know, and uh, that really is really one of the most beautiful Marian prayers we can we can pray, of course. And so firstly, just coming in. Um, coming to know and love Our Lady more by prayer, Marian prayer. And then second, Marian catechesis, you know, just um, learning more about Our Lady ourselves, you know, so committing to even studying, you know, about Our Lady, you know, good Marian books, especially the classics, those written by the saints, you know, what the church has, you know, and teaches about Our Lady, you know, uh, papal documents and so forth. So learning more about Our Lady in order to teach others about Our Lady, so Marian catechesis, and using any means we can to do that, you know, especially the mass media. So Marian catechesis, and then thirdly, you know, our Marian vow obliges us to to go to the missions for Our Lady, you know, if if we are so called by uh, our superiors to do so. So Our Lady, you know, choosing us to go to the missions, you know, through obedience to our superiors. So being ready and willing desires to go to the missions, you know, wherever, you know, even if it's a dangerous mission or uh, any time. So being uh, in missionary mode, you know, uh, for Our Lady. So though that's how we how we live it on a, on a practical level, you know, um, on day to day level. But, um, you know, I think everyone can can cultivate at least you know, a Marian prayer life and to. Uh, learn more about Our Lady themselves and to share that with others in the ways that they can, you know, different apostolates that they can. Excellent. I remember reading in, in this book here, talking about the Marian vow, and one of the things it said was, it talks about Mary being the fixed idea, having mad love in your heart for Mary, and feverish action. And I said that, and I said, woo, like, I love Our Lady, but that's, it's scary because it's it's so extreme and so intense even though I know that's exactly how it should be when you hear that it's, it's so all encompassing that that then out of all the, all the vows is the most all encompassing, the fixed idea in your mind at all time, our blessed mother. So uh, did true. that, did that, does that ring true for, for all of you that you, you see that, that that's something you're always the fixed idea, feverish action and mad love. Is that what everyone strives for? As friars, we're all called to do that, and that's that's exactly what Saint Maximilian Kolbe did. So he's an example for us to follow, and other great, uh, you know, Marian saints as well. So each of us you know, as friars, we're called to do that, cultivate those those uh, those same ideals, you know, and that's a day to day process, really, and just trying to live out the Marian vow each day. Excellent, excellent. And now I also noticed that whenever the friars greet one another, and it's in the book too, saying Ave Maria, or in the beginning of the homily, praise be Jesus and Mary. I absolutely love that. How did that get started? And yeah. 
Well, yeah, say Maximilian in his communities, he would uh, have the friars greet each other with, you know, just uh, Maria, you know, and so we just kind of, you know, follow that, you know, adding the Ave, so Ave Maria and the, the, uh, the Latin Hail Mary, or it could be uh, also in certain Romance languages, the same, the same words, you know, Hail Mary. No, but basically it's, it's a way of greeting each other in some ways, uh, seeing our lady in one another, you know, and, uh, encouraging that presence, you could say, and, uh, being our lady, you know, uh, for the others. So yeah. that's, it's customary for us to, to use that as our greeting. Absolutely. It's beautiful. And, uh, and the laity that are familiar with us, you know, um, they enjoy using that too, you know, just, uh, Whenever we see them, you know, wherever we're at, you know, if they know us, they'll they'll greet us that way, you know, Ave Maria. So. I love it. I love it. It's it's great. And I've actually learned a lot from about catechesis when I was growing it. I grew up a Catholic, but learning about apologetics, there's a series on your YouTube page, No Apologies, and I think it's a hundred something part series. And I learned a lot from that. And every time it opens, Ave Maria, and I said, This is great. Yes. <laughs> so so now, Father, you you were in originally in La Crosse, Wisconsin, right? At Cardinal Burke's, the National Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe. I was there for six years, uh, previous to my current assignment here in Griswold, Connecticut. So it was a very blessed time to be there at that beautiful shrine. I'm not sure if you've been there, but uh, I have. you know, yeah. we have okay. But it was a privilege and an honor to be there, you know, serve our Our Lady and to, to greet the pilgrims there to be a help. You know, uh, especially with mass confessions there every day. Uh, so, yeah, beautiful experience. And anyone who hasn't been there, certainly a, a, a beautiful shrine to go to. And uh, if anyone goes to Wisconsin, we encourage visiting other Marian shrines, too, though they're a bit uh, far apart. You know, on the opposite side of the state, there's the uh, in near Milwaukee, the Holy Hill uh, run by the Carmelites. And then up north, you know, north, um, northeast near Green Bay, you know, Our Lady of Good Help, you know, where there was the first uh, approved Marian apparitions in the U.S. So, um, yeah, to, to uh, visit all three if you can, but uh, very beautiful uh, shrines. Absolutely. And now are, are your friars still there? Yeah. there that are... They're what? still there, yes. I... I... In my head, I think they're they're running the show. They're not running the show. Of course, the Lord's running the show, but they're yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah. Yes, they're still there. There's a few friars, and uh, I'll probably be visiting them sometime soon. I usually do at least once or twice a year, and uh, preferably when the Cardinal's there. Cardinal Burke usually has uh, uh, different events going on during the summertime, you know, to celebrate the, uh, the anniversary of the Shrine's dedication. So that's July 31st. It's a big day. And then uh, in, in December, he's out there for the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe on the 12th, of course. So right. I had the wonderful privilege of, of going my, the first and only time I've been there. It was actually since I, I work with Cardinal Burke's nephews in our, our wrestling mindset sports psychology company, Cardinal Burke's sister actually gave me a tour of the shrine. So oh, it's wonderful. The, it's the, the kid's grandmother. So that's a that's a interesting thing. Oh, great. <laughs> so now, Father, one of the questions that I had was about the traditional Latin Mass. Didn't the friars originally begin, your friars begin celebrating the traditional Latin Mass? And then what what happened again? Well, yeah, I, when, when Pope Benedict the Sixteenth had issued the motu proprio, you know, kind of uh, encouraging, you know, the um, celebration of the Latin Mass, the uh, the extraordinary form. You know, that was back in 2007 or so. And um, so basically, you know, Father Stefano, our founder and the minister general, you know, then he encouraged the friars, the priests, the seminarians to learn it. And um, it was encouraged. And and so our friars did, you know, celebrate it quite frequently. And some in some friaries, it was almost exclusively so, you know, especially in some communities in Italy, you know, um, so, you know, we did have some difficulties, I think, with that, you know, just the, the way in which it was implemented. Not all the friars thought it should have been, um, you know, maybe so quickly done. It should have been a decision, some thought, you know, that um, was best made in the uh, general chapter, you know, which decides, you know, these kinds of questions of, you know, that affect the whole community. 
And so basically right now, you know, we don't celebrate it exclusively. We do celebrate the, the ordinary form uh, ordinarily. <laughs> and uh, the extraordinary form is celebrated, you know, at times, you know, depending on the community, you know, and uh, if, a, if a friar priest can do so on certain occasions, you know, the friar can do that usually, you know, private masses or for, for special occasions. In some places, there is the extraordinary form um, that's, you know, um, you know, for the for the people, you know, there at the, the church, like at the Shrine of Our Lady Guadalupe, they have it every Sunday, for example. So it's it's part of the uh, the shrines, you know, um, you know, schedule masses every Sunday. So uh, so I've been able to uh, to celebrate the extraordinary form while I was there, you know, for for various years, and so. And I, I still try to do so when I'm able to, you know, uh, it's not as often, but uh, certainly very beautiful and uh, to complement the ordinary form. Yeah, I, I really love and appreciate the traditional Latin mass. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that was important for Father Minelli and why he had such a strong zeal for for that? Um, I think, well, um, it's hard to say, you know, um, We've always been, you know, say more traditional, you could say, you know, and the way we celebrated the liturgy, even with the Novus Ordo, was always very traditional and just, you know, mindful of the traditions of the church, you know, especially the Latin rite, you know, and that's always been the case, you know, since our beginnings. And we still, of course, try to do that. So even if we celebrate the ordinary form, you know, to do it reverently as the church, you know, would have us do and try to use Latin as well. Uh, and so forth, Gregorian chat, whenever that's possible. Um, but Father Stefan, I, I think, thought that that was something that, uh, you know, would be uh, good to do because, you know, uh, he had a, gr a great love for the liturgy itself. And this was a way in which you know, I think, uh, you know, the friars could, um, could grow in, their, in their, their own spiritual life, you know, tapping into the rich tradition of the church, you know, which the extraordinary form you know, kind of has, you know, so many centuries, you know, worth of, of uh, beautiful, you know, prayers and so forth. And so I think he had, uh, you know, that in mind that each of us would be able to tap into that rich treasure of the church and share that with the faithful as well. Excellent. And Father, are there any occasions that you do that at Griswold, I mean, now I know we're in we're in quarantine, but is are there any times that you have public traditional Latin masses that the lady would be able to come to? Here at Griswold, not at the moment. You know, so basically, I, I celebrate it personally, just you know, uh, like a private mass. You know, whenever I'm able to, and again, that's only every so often. Okay. And now another thing I was thinking with such a beautiful devotion to the Blessed Mother, I think about St. Joseph and his connection. So how does he tie into your spirituality as Friars of the Immaculate? Of course, St. Joseph is a perfect model for us to follow as one who loves Our Lady. You know, you can't uh, really um, outdo St. Joseph in that love for Our Lady, of course, except our Lord himself, you know. Right. You know, so, so yeah, St. Joseph, we, uh, you know, as the church would have us do, we look to him as, you know, our spiritual father, you know, um, he's the great patron of the whole church. So uh, we need to turn to him regardless, you know, all of us as Catholics. So it's a, a devotion that is, is really uh, essential to us as Catholics being devoted to St. Joseph, our spiritual father. But um, yeah, his his all you could say devotion to Our Lady, a devotion to his his immaculate spouse, you know, just um, is something that we can learn from, you know, just uh, you could say his consecration in some ways, you know, to her, uh, his um, his um, you know virginal, you know, um, marriage, you could say that unity with Our Lady, you know, as spouse. I think that's. That's something that we can look to as well, you know, that, that union with Our Lady, you know, uh, in a mystical way, you know, uh, a mystical spouses, as it were. Some, you know, uh, mystics speak about this, this gift, you know, of uh, reaching that level of, you know, um, you know, 
kind of similar to the the mystical espousals with God, you know, kind of a, some sort of a mystical espousal with Our Lady, you know. So, you know, it makes sense just with the um, how the three hearts are so linked that whenever you have the Sacred Heart of Jesus, you always have the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Most Chaste Heart of Saint Joseph, just inseparable. Right. Exactly. That's that's beautiful. And now, um, information you've given me in the past about how the lady could practically um, Marianize our lives. You spoke about the importance of all Saturdays, especially first Saturdays. You, sp you spoke to me about the 13th day of the month um, as our, our, our Lady of Fatima, especially between June, uh, May and October. And you also spoke about Marian feasts, even minor Marian feasts. Can you talk a little bit about, about those and anything else? Surely that, that there's lots, yeah, the church offers to us, you know, to be able to um, grow in our devotion towards Our Lady. So as you mentioned in the liturgy, uh, every month there's at least one Marian feast or memorial. And of course, yeah, every Saturday is dedicated to Our Lady in a special way. So as Catholics, we need to get back to yes. honoring Our Lady in some way, some special uh, gesture, you could say, of love to her on Saturdays. And, and of course, the first Saturday devotion, we have to bring back, you know, our uh, uh, fidelity to that. It's a small thing, but a very big thing, you know, that Our Lady requests of us to do, you know. And um, yeah, just the, the prayers of the church that are, you know, recommended to us, you know, um, especially those uh, that uh, are in the liturgy, you know, various um, Marian prayers, Marian hymns like the Salve Regina other beautiful hymns that we can also pray or sing. You know, um, again, just learning about Our Lady too, you know, um, I think, uh, so just, there's always more that we can learn, you know, just uh, good Marian books, and then praying the, the greatest Marian prayer of the rosary, trying to pray that. As far as, you know, spreading devotion to Our Lady, um, you know, one great way to do that is to, you know, offer others, you know, the miraculous medal, you know, like other saints have done, you know, St. Maximilian himself, uh, Mother Teresa was a great uh, uh, apostle of the miraculous medal and would, would uh, give them out in handfuls, you know, almost wherever she would go, you know, have her sisters do the same. And, um, yeah, that's one of the most effective ways, just giving these little, you know, sacramentals uh, to others as, a, as an in, you know, and reminding others they do have a spiritual mother, you know, in the and the medal itself is very powerful, of course, you know, just, uh, you know, that uh, uh, those that wear it with with uh, trust, with faith, with confidence in Our Lady's intercession will receive great graces from that. Right. Excellent. And I, I actually just had someone on the show two weeks ago who had a massive conversion because of the miraculous medal. He was actually a former Satanist and he had a full conversion from the miraculous metal. So this is, mm -hmm. this is absolutely real and powerful. Mm -hmm. so, That's right. So, yeah. Father, is there a certain blessing? I know a priest can bless the miraculous metal basically however he wants, but is there a, a, a certain blessing that would be maybe more efficacious or more traditional to use for the blessing of the miraculous metal? Uh, there is a, uh, a prayer, a specific prayer for that. You know, whenever one's enrolled in the miraculous medal, there is this prayer, you know, and uh, I don't know it by heart. It's a, it's a, a lengthier prayer, you know, um, you know, if, if, if a priest or deacon blesses it with a simple blessing, that's, that's certainly valid. But uh, I like to use the, uh, yeah, that, uh, that uh, prayer that's prescribed for that, you know, and so whenever I can use it, I do. Right, right. Sure. that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> now, isn't there also a, a a little crown? I think you said of the Blessed Virgin, a, a little a little crown that you that that that's prayed, and then I know of the green scapular and the seven sorrows devotion. Or is that related to the crown? Can you explain any of those? Uh, I maybe you're thinking of the Franciscan crown. Maybe that. Maybe that. Uh, if that's the <laughs> yeah, that's the. Uh, yeah, traditional Franciscan rosary, you know, um, it's basically yeah, the seven joys, I'm sorry, yeah, the, uh, the, the five joyful mysteries, but a couple added, you know, it's, it's uh, a little bit different, but, uh, you know, um, this is a traditional, yeah, uh, rosary that we pray, 
And um, Father Stefano had come up with a different version of that, the seven joys uh, of Our Lady, you know, and um, and we, we pray these. Uh, they're, um, you know, the, the church has granted to us, you know, um, the privilege to pray them you know, and to receive the indulgence, you know, for praying it, you know, and uh, those who pray it with us or with any of our, our tertiaries, for example. Um, so yeah, the... Um, the Annunciation, the Visitation, the Birth of Our Lord, and then the um, the showing of Jesus you know, to the Magi, so kind of Epiphany, you could say, finding of Jesus in the Temple, and then the um, Jesus appearing to his mother uh, on Easter morning, so being the first to see him risen, is the sixth joy. And then the seventh joy is Our Lady, uh, Mother of the Church at Pentecost, you know, that, that joyful occasion for her. So that's that's the seven joys we pray. It's a little bit different than the Franciscan crown. but uh, And then the seven sorrows, yeah, that's, that goes back to the Servites, you know, the, the Order of Servites uh, had a, a special devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows. And we pray those as well, uh, basically the same, the same sorrows. And then the seven glories we pray as well. That's something that Father Stefano came up with and for which we, we also can receive the plenty of indulgence when prayed uh, together as a community of friars. And the seven, the seven glories of Our Lady are well, the seven great you know, uh, I guess privileges uh, that she has received. You know, as first, you know, the Immaculate Conception, her divine maternity, her perpetual virginity, her universal co-redemption, her maternal mediation, her assumption to heaven, body and soul, and then finally her coronation. So those are the seven glories that uh, we also pray, very beautiful. And for each of those three uh, sets of um, crowns, you know, there's the seven Hail Marys for each of the uh, those uh, the mysteries or whatever it might be. Excellent. Excellent. Beautiful. And I, I think I kept saying the little crown because I was thinking the little office. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. So now do, do do you as Friars of Imac, do you, do you pray this or is that more for the laity or who normally prays the little office? Well, you know, we don't pray that as a community. We certainly could pray it, you know, privately. You know, our Friars, we pray together the, uh, the Liturgy of the Hours, you know, the Divine Office together. Uh, but certainly can supplement that, and uh, anyone can pray the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Certainly, a very beautiful devotion. Okay, yeah. Now I know this is a newer edition. I've heard, I've heard though people recommend the 1954 edition. I don't know if you've heard anything about that. People tend to like the older, more traditional because it has the English and the Latin. Have you heard anything about that? No, not really. I think yeah, it's just a matter of preference. Also the the. the if one prefers the Latin or maybe the older English, maybe translation might be preferable. I haven't looked at it myself. Okay. Okay. And going back to the Marian vow, what, what are some of the best resources that you'd recommend for people to learn more about the Marian vow so they could live their consecration to its fullest? Oh, that book that you just showed <laughs> earlier is uh, I guess probably one of the best ones we have that we published through the Academy of the Immaculate on our, our website. You can just yeah go to the the uh, the website for the Academy of the Immaculate or our principal website here in the US, Mary uh, Marymediatrix.com. And there are other resources that we also have that'll be helpful, I think, that we publish in different books. Uh, you know, of course the writings of Saint Maximilian are very good. You know, that's uh, from which we uh, draw um, much you know uh inspiration from uh and also uh of course the great saints who wrote about consecration you know saint louis de montfort his writings and uh um uh, father emil Nuber, we published several of his works and he is a great uh marian apostle as well he was a contemporary of saint maximilian and they had communications between them so uh, St. Maximilian was uh, a much appreciative of Father Emil Nubert's works, especially Jesus, 
uh, my my ideal Jesus son of Mary, which is you know very uh, well known and very beautiful work, uh, Marian consecration. Excellent, excellent. I remember I watched a good, a really good YouTube video of Father Murphy. I think he's from England. Mm -hmm. The Friars of the Immaculate. He had a, he had a beautiful um, description about an hour long on the Marian vow. And I think I also saw something of the sisters. Um, they have, I guess, an introduction an introduction video to the 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 Marian vow. Mm -hmm. So that so that's excellent. So there's you have the friars. There's also sisters, right? That's another order. And then and then the lay people. There's an apostolate for lay people too. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. Yeah, Father Stefano he founded uh, uh, an association specifically for the laity that um, would like to share in our our uh, our spirituality, you know, Marian Franciscan spirituality, and that association is called the Mission of the Immaculate Mediatrix, or MIM for short. And you know that's something that we um, we start up. Uh, almost wherever we're at as the friars and uh, the sisters could do the same, you know, start a group, you know, wherever they're at. And there are monthly meetings, you know, uh, formation meetings, time to pray together, uh, fellowship and, uh, you know, uh, uh, sharing uh, ideas for apostolates and uh, joining forces in different ways that we can, uh, you know, carry out an apostolate for Our Lady. And so there's different membership levels as well. You know, there's uh, the first level, those who uh, make the total consecration to Our Lady after about a year or so of formation. Uh, and then the second level is actually those who do make the Marian vow, like a private Marian vow, kind of extra commitments to that. And then finally, the third level, uh, if one is, uh, feels called to go on to uh, the, the third level, um, and that's to be a Franciscan tertiary of the Immaculate and just with um, further obligations as well. That's great. Excellent. A lot of great information. Thank you, Father. I'd like to send as many people your way, the Friars way as possible. So any, where, could, where can we find more information about the Friars of the Immaculate, um, the Academy of the, the Immaculate, any kind of um, social media pages, websites, all that? Yeah, the two principal ones that I would recommend going to is, yeah, our principal one is marymediatrix.com, you know, our, our main web page in the U.S., and then airmaria.com. That's where they can get all the, you know, the whatever we produce in terms of the, the videos, the daily homilies, and so forth. A lot of resources on there, too, of, you know, past uh, talks, conferences, symposia, you know, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of good materials there, you know, on Our Lady, especially. Absolutely. And I could personally testify that the, all of the homilies that I see, all of you, um, your, you know, all the other friars, you and I, just, it, they're just phenomenal. I, I feel so, so close to our Blessed Mother, so close to our Lord. When I listen to all of you, just a, a beautiful, beautiful spirituality and formation that you have over there. So I, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, what what you guys do. So th thank you so much. Well, thank you for your support. God bless you. Absolutely, Father. And, and one more, how do we, how how can people donate to you and how can people um, request masses also? That was some a question that I had a while back. Uh, sure, sure. Um, yeah, there is, the I think, a way in which the donations are are uh, possible on our, our main web page. Yeah. Um, and each individual friary, we have five friaries in the U.S., you know, I guess they can be contacted individually and the, the contact information is there on that main web page, you know, and uh, each of our friaries, you know, could probably um, help out with uh, celebrating masses for individuals if they have prayer intentions. We get people calling for that as well. So, um, yeah, just uh, checking the main web page and the, that'll, that'll get you to uh, any of the friaries as well, you know, whether getting uh, information, you know, on how to contact us, you know, certainly, um, you know, that's the place to go. Excellent. Thank you very much, Father. Can you please close us down with a, with a blessing, um, myself, our viewers, all of us, your apostolate, everything? Surely. Through the intercession of Our Lady, you know, Mediatrix of all graces, Corredemptrix and Advocate, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy on you. 
may turn his countenance toward you and grant you his peace. May the Lord bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, Father Jacinto. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Gene, for having me. God bless you, and I'll be sure my prayers for your apostolate and for all those who are listening. Thank you, and I will link all of those sites that you told me on the show notes, and I'll send the video over to you as well. Thank you again. Please. Thank you so much. God bless you, and Ave Maria. Ave Maria.